The following is an excerpt from the feature documentary film, An American Small Town. To watch the entire film and learn how you can support this important film series, visit www.anamericansmalltown.com. Making good beer is relatively easy, particularly in the modern world, because there's a lot of technology in the internet and suppliers have made it relatively easy for a brewery to start and to people, for people to make good beer. To make great beer is uh, very, very hard. To make world-class beer is probably uh, multiple lives. Uh, it takes, it takes I've, I've been brewing beer since uh, 1978, and it, it's, I'm still learning. It's uh, that, that fine tuning of that last little bit to make perfect beer, it's, it's a fleeting and difficult process because small changes have huge impacts, and it takes weeks, if not months, to make beer, and then it might sit in a bottle for many, many months. So the changes that the, co the effects of a, of a cause may not be easily uh, uh, determined. Um, you may not know what you did, why this beer tastes great, or why this beer tastes bad. So that's, hence, that's a scientific aspect. And uh, so brewing becomes um, very convoluted, very confusing, very chaotic. Uh, again, like science, you're looking at lots of data, and you're looking for causes and effects amongst a, a haystack of data and it's hard, it's hard to find that needle and um, it takes lots of repetition and lots of discipline and attention to detail. This is a brewery that was started by a woman. That would never happen in Singapore. That would never happen in Germany. Uh, it only happens in forward-thinking uh, countries like the United States. And, that's what makes this country great, and that's why you will not find uh, more patriotic people than Deb and I, because we know that it's not just a cliche. We know that it's true. I consider myself a patriot. 
myself to be the founder of the group. And uh, the reason being because Dan was really focused on the equipment. And we have to give him credit because he's here working every day. But I negotiated all the equipment. I was the sole representative of the offering, which no woman has ever done before. I, and I raised all that money by myself. Beer is very much an art because it's about flavor, but it's also a science. I mean, we've been married for 30 years, and I'm very much a morning person. He's very much an afternoon person. Working together is not as romantic as you would think, but it does, um, you know, makes for a very rich relationship. And he takes care of all the production issues. And then I'm more, you know, home-based. I take care of wholesalers, investors, banking, um, all the marketing, I draw the labels. When I met Deb, she lived in a trailer that I think she paid $5,000 for. That was a lot of money. And uh, basically, you know, was working as a janitor. I was cleaning bathrooms and trying to pay my way through college and doing a little art on the side and um, making people's logos and graphics. And that's when I met Dan. We started 20 years ago. Our first year, we made 900 barrels. So basically, for all intents and purposes, it was Deb and I Deb and I, and then we hired one guy, and we were in the Ale Brewery, 900 barrels. You know, we will make 140, 140, 145,000 barrels this year, but 20 years ago we made 900 barrels. He went to Germany and he served a brewing apprenticeship. After that, he was also, uh, went to Siebel's, they had a long course then, his valedictorian of his class. Brewing is, uh, for me, is an artistic expression. It's like being a chef or somebody making a painting. Um, it's about uh, flavor, and that's what drives pretty much most of my thinking during the day. He is a Diploma Master Brewer, and he's one of only a handful in the United States. You produce a beer, and it's perfect when it leaves the brewery, and it's like sending your children out into the world, and then you lose control of them, and they, be, they, be, they come under the influences of the outside world. Um, is the beer kept cold? Is it is it served at the proper temperature? Is the beer glass clean? Are the draft lines clean? Is are they be, is it being pushed with the proper gas? And if those things are not done properly, your little baby can can really go astray, and it's awful. Um, no one has passed it besides him since 1987. It's very rigorous, and it was so impressive that the um, people from that university in London wrote a number of letters to the um, you know higher-ups at Anheuser-Busch to let them know how gifted they thought he was so he really he really does know his stuff he is a little brewery sponge he has yeast in his veins <laughs>
This is our original Riverside Brewery. That's what we call it now. Behind you, there's a little creek. And so that's why it's called Riverside. But as we grew in 2000, yeah, 2005, we had maxed out this brewery. We thought we were gonna be maybe a 15 or 20,000 barrel brewery and just pay our bills. But we had brewed something like 65,000 or 68,000 barrels of beer and literally had no more room and sales were up 75%. And I, I mean, I just walked around saying the F word under my breath about every 10 seconds. Cause it's not thrilling to be like maxed out. You know, what are you gonna do? So we, I searched around for property and eventually found a very nice piece of land on the exact opposite end of New Glarus, which is all of one mile from here. And I was thinking I'd take you up there and show you our new hilltop facility. The large breweries since uh, you know, the end of Prohibition or since World War II have turned beer into a commodity. Advertising has promoted beer in such a way that it's gotten away from the idea of flavor. So many people view wine as a handcrafted, handmade product, but beer comes out of a factory. They don't really understand that beer is very much an artistic expression. You're looking at, you're looking at crop years, you're looking at uh, ag agricultural um, products that, are, that you're blending together to make flavor. And there's a lot that can go wrong in brewing beer. So he wanted to do this uh, not so much for production, we will use it for something, but it's not enough hops to run our brewery, but it is to show people what hops are. they keep coming around the doors. These are cute. rare frog, look. See, it's changing color. I think this is a green peeper. <laughs> but I, I really like frogs. Do yeah, I do. I think so. He's jumping. I don't know if you're gonna be able to get him out of here. You don't think so? Are you ready? Yeah, I think so. Hand off. He's cold. So you'll know yep, when you I got, got him. Do you have him? Yep. Okay, quick. I'll go take him to the woods. Okay. Yeah. And there's people like circling the parking lot. So be aware, there's two cars of people. And I told them we weren't open yet, but maybe you should start heading down there. Pretty good problem to have, huh? Yeah, well, we have this problem all the time, but you never know. Some days they hang out and no one comes. So I have to warn them. Did you get that puppy? There was some rescue puppies. You haven't found out yet. Found out yet. Did you call them? I, I, I left a message with you, but I heard it back from you. Oh, damn! Someone called me yesterday while I was back here working. And I'm, it was probably them. Probably her, and I didn't have an opportunity to get them. Well, you feel free to go take off and call them again. Sure. You should. They're, they're cute. <laughs> they are cute. Okay, I got my fingers crossed. All right, thank you. There's some rescue uh, little chocolate labs, and Adrian has a young family, and he's uh, his dog's getting older, too, and he's, so he's been looking for one. And, Somebody emailed me a batch of these little lab puppies that are looking for homes. So we'll see what happens. That's the fun of having the brewery. Like there's somebody too had a big drama with the house or buying a new house and then something happened with it and they weren't going to be able to get it and now they got another house with an accepted offer. And I think it's part of the fun. Uh, Three miles of stainless tubing in this brewery, 
It was uh, built by both union and non-union workers. I'm really proud of that. And you can see all the nice turns and curves and their clean welds. You can't get food grade hand welding, I don't think, in any other part of the world done like this. And there's more than 27 miles of data cable in the booth. We use it when we get new varieties of grain or hops or the new harvest. And they'll make little tiny batches in there so that we can taste you know, what's going on in that year's harvest. He doesn't really do pilot batches and then have little test batches and then here's what he's going to make. He thinks about flavors and then he usually just goes directly to making a commercial batch of beer. In your all's lineup, past, present, uh, what's been your favorite beer, New Glarus beer? Well, of course, uh, spot a cow on a summer night in a frosted mug to me is, is perfection. Um, I like a, uh, I like a nice fresh glass of Moon Man, but if if I had the choice, uh, we make a beer called Hometown Blonde, which is sort of a European, a Bohemian style Pilsner. I would, if that was available, hands down, I would pick that beer. ask me all the time, aren't you going to sell out of state? And I, and I think, why? I mean, even the facility we just built is really, you know, if we continue at the current rate of growth, we'll outgrow it in, you know, less than 10 years, maybe five. So there's not really any extra beer to send anywhere. There was somebody, I can't remember who had the quote uh, during the election, something about, you know, uh, what, you know, he's saying he built the business or, you know, whatever, how this conversation was happening on the internet and kind of implying that, I, and they were saying it's me thinking I'd chime in, like, well, you built your own business, so you should be able to collect all of the riches that have accrued. And I'm like, no, like, are you kidding me? Do you see all the people who show up here and work hard and give their heart and soul? I mean, I'm not here running the fork truck and running the brews. I mean, it. everybody, everybody together, if you don't have a great bottling team, and you're a brewer, you're a home brewer. I, you can't like pull people off the street and give them temporary work and minimum wage. What kind of crap is that? I ran into this guy that is in England and he builds ruins. And I was like, oh, this would be so cool. So I worked with him on the design and now we're getting toward the end phase up here on the top. That's the brewmaster's office and we serve beer in there on Saturday and Sundays. And then people can sit out here and this is our granary. And you can see the big door where the horses would come in to deliver the grain and the bottom of the silo for storing the grain. And then on this side is the bottle shop. And then the, bo the top that's getting finished now that we just walked through is the manor house. So people can sit up there and we're going to have timbers and big um, columns of beams with hops growing on them for people to sit under and enjoy their beer on the hilltop. Congratulations on your success. Thank you very much. That's so cool. Yeah, thank you. We uh, really appreciate it. It's great to have it. a dream and make it work out. There are a lot of things that we do at the, the brewery and a lot of things that I did in construction that people were just shaking their heads. I mean, really, genuinely, like, oh my God, you know, this is nuts. And I'm like, no, nah, I think this is going to work. And I still do it that way. And I think it's good that I'm not, I don't have a business background and I'm not really involved in the beer industry because it, it allows me to be very creative in my solutions. Even now, I think sometimes people say things because it's like, you know, who the hell is she? You know, I was 33 years old, little girl. And, you know, like, come on, you think your husband's so great? Seriously, you know? And now, I, you know, I outsell all of them. So it's like, well, proof's in the pudding.